restless hours of sleepless nights, we witness tiredness, we witness joy, but more importantly, we, we witness brilliance. This year's Just Up competition has made us understand the importance of creating a legal platform for students, both nationally and globally, to have a supplement to their legal education. This year, we understand the importance of advocacy, we understand the importance of developing critical thinking skills. Today, we witnessed the final championship match between two schools that emerged as top ranking schools in this year's competition. This year's competition, unlike any other, had the participation of 10 law schools across Ghana. And this year, we again witnessed the final championship match, which will have the teams that will represent Ghana in the international law bands. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, respectfully, Ifia Uswa Banahini, and I appear as the agent for the applicants, the Republic of Anchani. I will be using 23 minutes to address this court. Together with my co-agent, Nana Kwe who will address this court in 20 minutes. Respectfully, I will begin to address this court on the first issue concerning capacity. Respectfully, Your Excellencies, on this issue, this court is called upon not to determine the merits of the case, but to make a determination as to whether or not Andrano has capacity to present the dispute concerning the deprivation of nationality of the very important. And it is the submission of the applicants that Antrano is clothed with the requisite capacity to do so. Yes, the applicants first of all submit that Antrano has capacity generally to appear before the ICJ by virtue of being a state and a state party to the ICJ statute, as evidenced from paragraphs 2 and 62 of the company. Your Excellency is turning to address this court on our first submission. The applicant submits that Article 14 of the CRS confers capacity on Anchano to present this dispute. Your Excellency, according to Article 14 of the Convention, the contracting parties have the right to submit any dispute which concerns the interpretation and application of the Convention before the court. And it is our submission that by virtue of being a state party to so the So, agent, are you accepting the doctrine of legal ominous parties or the doctrine of legal ominous obligation? Your Excellency, the applicant respectfully accepts the presence of an legal ominous parties obligation in respect of the obligation to prevent state Mr. President, your Excellencies, good afternoon, and may it please the court, Ebenezer Oko Aite Atiapa, co-agent for the respondent state, the Kingdom of Remesia. Your Excellencies, in 20 minutes, I will address this court on the third and fourth issues. First, concerning Antron's refusal of remission consular access to remission national, Ms. Sakisho, and second, concerning Remisha's refusal of Dr. Malek's entry into Remisha. With your kind permission, Your Excellencies, I will begin with my submission on the third issue. Your Excellencies, international law recognizes the exercise of the state's sovereign rights in granting nationality to individuals. Inherent in this right to a nationality is the fundamental right to consular protection, one that is very fundamental. Your Excellencies, on 1st June 2016, Ms. Sakisho attained remission nationality in conformity with all applicable requirements under the NIP. However, six years later, in her unfortunate time of detention in Amtranu, she was refused access to remission consular representatives. Your Excellencies, the applicant has argued that Ms. Sakisho was not entitled to remission consular access because her nationality was not one that complied with the effective nationality principle and also that Antran did not breach Article 36 of the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations. In response to this, Your Excellencies, the respondent will advance three arguments 
to demonstrate that Antrim, by refusing Mr. Shaw access to a mission consular representative, reached international law. Your Excellencies, on our first submission, we submit that Mr. Shaw's remission nationality was legitimate, Your Excellencies. Your Excellencies, under international law, as admitted by the applicant, a state has a discretion to determine the laws under which individuals can attain their nationality. At this point, we'll run by the awards that are up for grabs as we wait for our judges. So the Ultimate National Championship Cup is sponsored by Endowuna and Company. Endowuna and Company will also be awarded the best female oralist in this year's competition. Then we have the first runner-up trophy, and then the second runner-up trophy. We also have the Spirit of the Jessup Trophy, which is sponsored by Window Chambers. The Spirit of the Jessup Award is given to the team that most exemplifies the Jessup spirit of friendship and academic excellence. We also have the Best Oralist Award, sponsored by BNP which will be awarded to the best oralist emerging in the preliminary rounds. We'll have the second best oralist award and the third best oralist award. We'll also have three memorial awards, which are the overall best memorial, which is your average for both applicants and respondents memorials. We'll have the best memorial applicants and the best memorial respondents, all of which are sponsored by African Media Associates. And then we have the Best New Team Award, which is sponsored by APPC PRABC. So as soon as we are done with the National Championship match and the judges are done with the deliberation, we will begin the award ceremony. So before we go into the presentation of the awards, we we'll receive some few feedback comments from our judges for the finalists and then we can start. My name is Justice Sadi Adimaba. I'm a justice of the High Court, sitting in the commercial division. Um, my first observation was that the advocacy of all the agents, the rest the applicants and the rest of them are very good. We are impressed with the level of advocacy. Yes. And then the appreciation of the law. We observed that that was also above average. But the way you answered the questions, which was also good, I would say. But um, I observed one thing, you know, some had excess energy and others had maybe just a little bit lack of energy. So <laughs> if you are able to balance that <laughs> as you are going for the international competition, that would be a good thing for you and add a lot of value to your skills. So generally, as a whole, we are quite impressed. That is really my observation. Thank you. So my name is Anicha Amakomenta. I am an international tax lawyer and um, policy advocate. I I have to agree with my my lord, my lady, that I was very impressed with the quality of the presentations that you received today. I believe that there was a lot of composure, there was a lot of good advocacy skills, um, a strong knowledge of the relevant laws was evident in the submissions from all the agents. I, I also want to point out that there's a need to always remain present in the moment and, 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 and engage with your, your judges. It's important to read your judges and, and try and make sure that you are addressing your questions appropriately that you are understanding the question that has been put to you and that you are pulling out the relevant response. And at the end of the day, remember that the point of advocacy is to persuade. So you have to understand what you are saying fully so that you make sure that you are making your point across. If you don't make your point, you might lose your target audience. 
But all in all, it was a very, very impressive performance, and I wish them all the best as they go forward. What I was saying is that generally everyone was very good. But whenever you are making a point, ensure that if it is just international law instruments you are referring to, it's specific about the principle. Uh, the uh, case law be very specific, what it catches and what it sees for you, then apply it to the facts that you have exactly as it should be. Otherwise, when the presentation runs from here to there, then it confuses a little bit. So that be very coherent with the issue, coherent with the international law applicable, coherent with the case law applicable, and make distinction between one international law and the other. And also that when we talk about uh, state laws, be sure about what particular state law or domestic law that is applicable in a particular scenario. And whether or not the domestic law has attained a certain nature of recognition of international nature. So that when that distinction is made, we'll be able to apply it in a very simple and, and, and coherent and precise manner that the, the delivery, the judge follows you well enough. It's not enough to rattle case law here and there without applying it also. Somebody asks you a question for explanation before. So if you go high, please note some of these things that you are an international instrument. We, we judges, uh, we, we say that judges know the law, but you would persuade the judge to be on your side on the law. And so you cannot afford to be wrong on which particular law you want to apply to a particular issue. Thank you very much. My name is George Miguel Swanson, and I am a transactional and litigation lawyer. Uh, without repeating what I've been saying, I think the advocacy was excellent, and my expectation was exceeded. And I like the way the questions were answered, and I think we can do better than that. It was, it was very, very good. And the composure and everything was, was excellent. It was high excellent. And uh, I believe we will do well in this year's new uh, international news and I would encourage you to work harder as you are quick and you can do that for now. Thank you. It is quite uh, impressive. But we need a strong meeting uh, culture in the country so that we have um, very good advocates in the future. Now, coming to uh, the mood which we just today, uh, my uh, brethren uh, judges have given you uh, valid uh, comments, and I associate myself with all that we have said. Uh, just to add one or two. First, uh, time management. You need to utilize your time effectively and efficiently. What that means is that uh, one issue, you may have a number of arguments. Now, ask yourself, if you have uh, three arguments on an issue, the three arguments, which of them is most, is your strongest argument? Your strongest argument. You try and focus on that one. Uh, first, because the point is for you to uh, persuade. If uh, one or two arguments on the same issue would help you to persuade the bench, why do you try to do about three or four? Knowing that the time is what? is limited. So uh, take note of that. And again, uh, when it comes to the subject matter being you know, litigated uh, this year in the, the company, the international law is not very certain. There are a lot of gray areas. And that is an advantage to you as a motor. What that means is that you have a lot of room to persuade because most of the areas are 
it's not well settled, it's not crystallized. So you cannot actually be uh, pushed your particular corner and say that this is the, the standard position of work, the law. And international uh, law, most of the areas, often time, in absence of clear binding uh, treaty or other uh, convention and so on, you come into the area of casino international law. In casino international law, all the time you must go through the, you know, the requirements of trying to establish. Do we have enough state practice? Concordance with practice, uh, opinion juries, and all these things. And these are basic tools which should be at play when you are making arguments in the area of whether a customer international law has formed on a particular matter uh, or not. And with respect to state practice, I also uh, urge you that the issues which are in the company look around the world, look around countries. Some of the things are actually happening, so those examples, and then use them to actually uh, support your uh, arguments. Any with the best oralist awards. So we'll give a, an honorable mention to the fourth and fifth best speakers, and we'll present medals to the second and third best speaker, and a trophy to the best oralist. So in fifth place, we have Efia Ousua Banahele. For the speaker average of 91.09. In fourth place, we have Solomon Omane Mensa. For the speaker average of 91.7. With just 0 0.1. Difference. In third place, we have Ado Obe Okoko Aduma. Coming strong with 92.6 from Mount Perth University College, we have Sapiano Ado. participated at most once in the GESA but demonstrated academic excellence. This award will be presented by a rep from AWC PRUC who sponsored this award. The winners of this award is Mount Christ University <laughs> will be presented by Gets to represent Ghana as an exhibition team 
is the University of Professional Services. This juncture, I will hand over to the judge president for him to announce the first runner-up in the winners of the championship. So we had a very um, high level, highly competitive meeting. So this is what we did. Uh, each speaker was called uh, over 50. So the team was over 100. And then we did the average. So for uh, first respondent, that one scored 24, that 242, that 3, that 38, that 440, that 5, 35. Uh, second respondent, that one scored 46, that 245, that 346, that 4, 45, that 545. So this is the summary. So uh, the applicant, the first applicant had 193 over 250. Second applicant had 193 over 250. Then the first uh, respondent had 193 over 250. And then second respondent 220 over 250. And to do the aggregation and uh, averaging, uh, what it means is that uh, applicant had uh, 75, the respondent had 85. <laughs> The, the applicant is a, the runner-up. The applicant is the runner-up. And then the respondent is the winner. So the, best, the best worries for this particular session, we gave it to the second respondent. I think that coming from last year when we didn't win the competition, we understood that there were certain things we had to work on. So this year coming into the competition, we took particular notice of the things and the comments the judges noted from last year. And so in our training processes, we were very particular about those things. But we think that above all, one thing that really stands out for us is the grace of God, which particularly came through our faculty, our coach, our dean and the team that worked together to put this out there. Going into the international round, we are looking forward to putting Ghana on the map because like we've all seen, we have very good memorial scores and our oralists won the best oralist award. And we are trusting God to make us advance this year and at least to make it to the semi-final to set a precedent for the following years to come so that people will know that Ghanaians can actually do very well in the international rounds and not just well in the Ghana qualifying rounds. Yeah.